What's going on, everyone? It's KB the Mark here, back with some breaking news. We got a couple stories here to report, such as Bobby Lashley opens up about the Hurt Business, AEW star resigning, WWE files trademark for Top Star, plus more. Well, since we have a lot to report, let's just jump right into it. Chris Jericho opens up about WWE. Chris Jericho appeared on Wrestling with Freddie this week to talk about various topics such as trying to help get as many people over as he could at the start of AEW. Jericho would say, this is not a WWE bash, Chris began. I worked there for almost 20 years and I loved working for WWE. But one thing they still have an issue with, and you can see it if you watch the show, is building new stars. They have a problem with that, and I don't know why. Once again, it doesn't matter what they do. From day one in AEW, when we showed up on October 2nd, and even before that, when we showed up for the first couple pay-per-views, we had no television deal. Then, when we finally got one on TNT, it was an ad revenue share. What that means for people that don't know is you make the money based on the advertising. If you have 50 advertisers, you get a share. If you have one advertiser, you get a share. It was not a big monster deal, Jericho explained. I realized early on, kind of being the face of the company and the one guy the national audience knew besides Jim Ross, but the one guy that's in the ring and they knew Cody, maybe, but not really. Kenny and the Bucks were more independent or popular in other countries. I needed to make new stars as quickly as I could. Cody being one of them. Kenny Omega being another one. You look at my first few programs. Match 3 in AEW was against Darby Allin. Jungle Boy was right around that time. Then John Moxley, who had to be rehabbed when he came from WWE because Mox was not Mox when he first showed up. He was still Dean Ambrose. The goofy guy who wasn't funny doing all the stupid shit they made him do. We had to make him into a star right off that bat. NXT 2.0 rebounds after last week. The ratings for the latest edition of WWE NXT 2.0 are in. The show drew 593,000 live viewers, which is up from the 587,000 viewers the show previously drew a week ago. It did a .14 rating in the 1849 demographic. The show did a .11 rating one week ago. Last week, the show drew its lowest viewership since December 21st and tied the lowest key demo rating the show has done on the USA Network in 2019. Trish Stratus shares her thoughts on how far women's wrestling has come. WWE Hall of Famer Trish Stratus appeared on this week's The Bellas podcast to talk about the progression of women's wrestling over the years. Trish was asked what she thinks when she sees how far the women have come along in wrestling. Trish would say, I say, you're welcome to everyone, Stratus laughed. No, I mean, of course, it was a collaborative effort for sure. It was laying the groundwork. From the beginning, it was everything from re-educating the fans, what to expect from a female performer, it was the acceptance of the fans. It was the acceptance of the producers backstage for them to say, we can give them this, she continued. I remember one time to have a hardcore match was a big deal. They were like, I don't think they can. And I said, well, why can't we handle it if they can handle it? I remember I took a chair shot from Victoria. Let's put it this way. Some people were unhappy that it happened. I'm like, why? Guys take chair shots all the time. I consent to this. What a journey and so many players along the way to help make it happen like Jazz, Victoria, Molly Holly, and Mickey James. So it's cool watching it and having people looking back saying, this inspired me. It's touching. When you set out to do what you do in your world, the aim is to get the accolades from your coworkers. That was a big part of it. For me, was to earn the respect of my coworkers. I think we got there. We did pretty good. Bobby Lashley on the Hurt Business. Bobby Lashley stopped by the Mac Mania podcast this week to talk about how the Hurt Business wanted to be portrayed and the perception in which black athletes are viewed. Bobby Lashley explaining how the Hurt Business wanted to be portrayed. 
The one thing we wanted to do because of how the black athlete is portrayed, especially in the wrestling business, is something we have to go out there and dance, Lashley said. Sometimes we have to go out there and be a thug. I have a son, and a lot of kids try to emulate and look up to wrestlers. The one thing we wanted to show is who we really are. None of us are thugs. I got a college degree. I graduated with honors. I got a good head on my shoulders. When we come into work, we look professional, Lashley said. We don't come in with sweats and everything like that. What we were trying to do was show the black athlete in a different light. And I think people really liked it because of the synergy of all of us is real. Basically, with the Hurt Business, we were trying to show old school wrestling to this new school. You know, everything is PG. Everything is cool moves and everything like that. We wanted to show hard hitting old school style wrestling. That's where the hurt came along. Where the business came along was how we represent ourselves. We came out in suits. We came out clean. We make money. We make real good money as WWE performers, so we shouldn't look like anything else but superstars. We wanted to show all that on TV and have a good look for us as black athletes. AEW star re-signing. Frankie Kazarian is staying with AEW as he has signed a new contract with the promotion. PW Insiders reported the news today. The terms, money, and length of the deal were not disclosed. Kazarian was among the first batch of wrestlers to sign with the startup company in 2019, months after it was founded and before they had a TV deal with TNT. Veer, not coming? WWE has been hyping for months that Veer Mahan will be coming to Monday Night Raw. It's expected that he is getting repackaged, but there doesn't seem to be a firm timetable for his re-debut. There have been some speculation that perhaps WWE is waiting to debut him in the Men's Royal Rumble match, but apparently that is not the case. PW Insider reports, per sources in WWE Creative, that as of today, there are zero plans for Mahan to be in the Rumble, so unless there's a last second change, don't expect to see him on Saturday. WWE files trademark for top star. WWE has filed a trademark for Charlotte Flair on January 19th. WWE locked down the rights to the term, the queen, with it being listed for entertainment and merchandising purposes. Flair won't be defending her SmackDown Women's title at this Saturday's Royal Rumble event, but rather is set to compete in the Women's Royal Rumble match. She has stated that if she wins, she will select her own challenger for WrestleMania. All right, everyone, that was the news for January 26. Please hit that like button and become a member of the family by subscribing to the channel. I'm KB the Mark, signing off. Until the next one. I started with nothing and came out of king. Came out of king. Yeah. I've been the one that's been balling for rings. I've been the one that's been balling for rings. It's been me and my team and we chasing the green. Me and the team and we chasing the green. My team be the shit, we ain't balling for free. No balling for free. Yeah. My team be the shit, we ain't ballin' for free